On this week's GCN Racing News Show, road racing is back in full swing. We've got the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Races, the Mallorca Challenge, and the Grand Prix Marseillaise, plus the latest round of the UCI Cyclocross World Cup ahead of the World Championships this weekend. This week in the world of racing, we learned that there are early celebrations and then there are really early celebrations. He's maintaining it for, for the final kind of 10 kilometres, but he thinks he's won. <laughs> well, two laps to go. Poor lad. That was Emil Herzog of Bora Hansger, who thought he'd won the Trofeo Palma at the Challenge Mallorca, except there were still two full laps to go. I guess as it was on laps, he saw the kilometres to go signs on the side of the road, counting down to the finish line. We also learned that the commentator's curse is alive and well. Yeah, he's uh, Arietta, definitely 100% uh, the better descender here. Ooh, oh, no, down. no, 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 and that's that for Arietta this time. That was Igor Arietta hitting the deck at the Trofeo Palenza on Saturday. And finally, we learned that road racing is back in full swing. Not only have there been a whole host of races on over the last week, we've had those incredible views to feast our eyes on from France all the way to Australia. It's such a beautiful sport, isn't it? Now, it was Groupama FDJ who arguably had the most to celebrate on the men's side over the past week, winning two races in one day on opposite sides of the world. In Australia, Lawrence Pithy took his first ever World Tour victory at the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race. Uh, the Kiwi had been particularly disappointed with the way he rode tactically on the final stage of the Tour Down Under last week, but he more than made up for that on Sunday. Uh, on a particularly aggressive final lap, we saw attacks from Luke Plapp, still missing half his skin from that crash at the Tour Down Under, uh, Archie Ryan and US champion Quinn Simmons. However, they were all caught, setting things up for a reduced group sprint. Natnayal Tasfatsyon looks like he had it, but Pithy pipped him to the line. That was his second pro win after taking out Cholet Pé de la Loire as a Neo pro last year. Meanwhile, in Europe, Groupama FDJ were also celebrating at the end of the Grand Prix Marseillaise. Former champion of Luxembourg, Kevin Genietz, broke clear with Alex Baudin of Decathlon AG2R with close to 30 kilometres remaining. And despite a chase behind, they were never caught. Genietz clung on to Baudin on the climbs and comfortably outsprinted him at the finish. At the women's Deakin University road race in Australia, all eyes were on Sarah Gigante given her recent form. Her team, AG Insurance, went all in to support her, but on this occasion she was unable to finish the job off. Cecily Utrub Ludwig was on the attack on the final lap for FDJ Suez, but on the final climb of the race she was caught by Dominika Vlodarczyk of UAE and 19-year-old Rosita Reinhout of Visma Lisa Bike. And it was the youngster who prevailed. She took advantage of some hesitation from the other two with just under five kilometers remaining. And despite the best efforts of those behind her, including Gigante, she wasn't quite caught. It was close though. The two chasers almost caught her on the line, but not quite. Uh, Reinhardt is the youngest ever winner of that race, men's or women's, and the youngest ever winner of a women's World Tour one day race to boot. On to the Mallorca Challenge now then, which gave us five days of very fast racing last week. So fast, in fact, that on Friday, television coverage started earlier than planned, just so we could see at least some of the race. On day one, EF Education Easy Post got their first win of the year after a very successful few days on the island for their women's squad. Simon Carr was on the attack early on in the race, and when caught by Vlasov and McNulty, he used that as a valid excuse to sit on. Despite their best efforts, they were unable to drop him, and with McNulty out of the running with cramp in the finale, Carr only had to beat Vlasov in the sprint to the line, which he duly did, taking his fifth pro win in the space of just nine months. The second day marked the first win of the season for Sudal Quickstep, and it was their young guns who stole the show. Luke Lamperti perfectly delivered his teammate Paul Magnier to the line, and the 19-year-old became the youngest French rider since Jacques Anquetil to win a pro race. Uh, this was his power curve for the day, a peak five seconds of just under 1400 watts in the sprints of the line, which came at the end of five minutes at 484 watts. Uh, there are plenty of people out there who can do that five second power, but not after five minutes at that sort of intensity. Uh, that said, Greg Henderson was not convinced of the accuracy of that data when I posted it to Twitter, so we can either take it with a pinch of salt, or he's an absolute beast on a bike. Either way, a win's a win. Uh, McNulty and Vlasov were at it again at the Trofeo Serra Tramantura on Friday, with Lennart van Eetveld desperately clinging onto their wheels over the climbs. Once again though, despite their strength, they were unable to drop their breakaway companion, who proved once again to be quicker in the sprint to the line. Uh, that was Lotto Destiny's first win of the year. 
And now one of the standout riders at those series of races was Igor Arrieta in his first year as a pro rider with UAE Team Emirates. At the Trofeo Palenza on Saturday, he spent a long time off the front solo, eventually being caught by Van Eetveld, who was putting under real pressure on the descents. But then, as we saw at the start of the show, he crashed. Uh, Van Eetveld was then caught by a select group, and it was another young gun, 23-year-old Palaio Sanchez, who took Movistar's first win of the season. Uh, you may well remember Sanchez from last year's Vuelta España, where he really shone the climbs whilst riding for Burgos BH. Well, it seems like he's got a decent sprint on him, as well as his climbing. On the final race of the series yesterday, we had our second bunt sprint of sorts, a group of around 50 riders contesting the win. Uh, Herben Tayson was the fastest of the line that day for Antomarche Wanty Gobert, beating Alexander Kristoff and Marain Vandenberg. Now, it might not be the end of January just yet, but I thought it'd be interesting to look at which teams have been the most successful so far this season. In the men's, Jaco Alula and Bora Hansgrohe are atop the table with four wins each, whilst it's Visma Lisa bike at the bottom. Not only have they not taken a win yet, they've not even had a top three. Uh, Nothing really for them to worry about though. I seem to remember it was a similar picture this time last year, but they soon turned the tables of course. Uh, exactly half the World Tour squads on the men's side have now got themselves off the mark this year, but the only other teams to have won more than one race are Antomarche and Groupama. In the women's, SD Works are at the bottom of the table, but there is a very good reason for that because they haven't started racing just yet. AG Insurance Sudal lead the way with three wins so far, with Movistar and FTJ just behind them with two apiece. Uh, those tables will quickly, of course, change, but it's always good for team morale to get yourselves off the mark early in the season. Just before I move on, the Colombian National Championships were held at the weekend and it marked the return to competition of Nairo Quintana. It perhaps wasn't the return he was hoping for though, uh, he came 4th in the time trial and 26th in the road race. Danny Martinez took the time trial by a big margin whilst Alejandro Osorio won the road race. And if you've not heard of him before, it's because he only spent 3 months racing at World Tour level. Bahrain Victoria terminated his contract in 2022 for multiple breaches, including Covid rules. In the women's, Paola Patino of Movistar took her first title after two silver medals over the past three years, whilst 37-year-old Diana Penuela won in a time trial. On to cyclocross now, and two races at the weekend where two riders did the double. Uh, no prizes for guessing who though. Fem van Empel and Mathieu van der Poel, of course. At the X2O Trophy on Saturday, van der Poel was pushed close by European champion Michael van Turenhout, but it was plain sailing for van Empel there, who finished over a minute clear of Lucinda Brandt on the day. It was a lot closer the following day at the final round of the UCI World Cup though, where she had both Brandt and Vash for company for most of the race. In the end, it was the three of them who had a sprint to the line for the win, but this season Van Empel can win in any fashion and got the better of Vash to the line. In the men's, it was a really large group at the front for much of the race. Everyone was waiting for Van der Poel to attack, but it was a long time coming. It eventually came on the penultimate lap of the race, and with nobody able to follow, Van der Poel rode to his 12th win of the season from 13 races, with just one big one remaining. And there was an anonymous quote from the world champion in his post-race interview there. I'm good, but it's just after I attack, I'm not that fresh as I was. Uh the rest of the season, but it's it's normal. It's a good sign actually. It's a it's a nice feeling because then you know you've trained enough. Yeah, Freshness will come next week when you rest, of course. Yeah, for sure. Uh, last year was also a bit different. I only had one race at the weekend before, and um, yeah, now I had uh, yesterday and today, so it was a slightly different approach. But yeah, like I said, I feel uh, I feel okay. I just need to rest, and then hopefully. Next week, uh, I will have uh, my best legs of the season. If he can do that when he's fatigued, goodness only knows what he'll be like this Sunday once he's freshened up for the World Championships. Anyway, in the overall World Cup, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado was assured victory wherever she placed yesterday, which was 15th. Uh, Puck Peterson finished second overall with Brandt third. In the men's, Elizabeth didn't have too much to worry about. He comfortably won the series, but there were three Trek riders behind him battling it out for second and third. Joris Neuvenhaus defended his position in second though, with a second place behind Van der Poel on the day, but Pin Romhaar overtook Van der Haar to finish third. In other news, the latest big name rider to reveal their race program for the year is Geraint Thomas. He'll be back in Italy for the Giro d'Italia in May, where he finished an agonising second to Roglic last year, and after that he'll compete at the Tour de France in July. Speaking of the Giro, RCS announced the wildcard teams last week. Team Polti Cometa, Tudor Pro Cycling and Team VF Group Bardiani CSF Fight Zaini got the coveted spots, whilst it'll be the same three teams plus uh, Corotec Vinny Fantini who'll be at Milan San Remo. 
Uno X are going to have a new general manager as of February the 1st. Tor Huchot, former Green Jersey winner and general beast of a rider in his time, will take over from Jens Haugland at the helm. Now you can read more on that story over at globalcyclingnetwork.com. Joe Dombrowski has announced that his pro career is now behind him. The 32-year-old had been searching for a new team after his contract at Astana wasn't renewed, but the search was in vain. Dombrowski had an 11-year stint in the World Tour and won a stage of the Giro d'Italia whilst riding for UAE in 2021. All the best for whatever comes next, Joe. And finally, there has been some changes to the timings of the women's flesh will on and liege baston liege for this year. Uh, the races will now take place after the men's, as opposed to before, with the hope that it will increase the TV audience. And I reckon that should work. It certainly has done for the Tour of Flanders over the past few seasons. Right, that's all for this week. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll be back again next Monday.